بخير واهلا وسهلا بكم في رحاب المركز العربي الامريكي للثقافه والفنون مع نشاط جديد من انشطتنا التي نحاول من خلالها تعزيز حضورنا وثقافتنا في هذه البلاد لمن لا يعرفنا بعد من نحن المركز العربي الامريكي للثقافه والفنون نحن مؤسسه ثقافيه تاسست قبل حوالي ست اعوام ب 20 ابريل نيكست 20 ابريل بنكون صار لنا عمرنا ست سنين بالضبط ما بعرف اذا بتعرفوا بالتاريخ العربي ليش 20 ابريل وات داز ات سيجنيفاي سيسالم 20 نيسان شو صار تاسيس الضابط القلميه الاولى تبعي جبران خليل جبران وميخائيل نعيمي في نيويورك سنه 1920 فنحن نطمح لان نكون الرابطه الثقافيه الثانيه في العالم نقيم نشاطاتنا حضوريا في هذا المكان كل اول اربعاء في الشهر ونقيم امسيات افتراضيه عبر الانترنت في ايام متفرقه خلال الشهر نظمنا امسيات مباشره من معظم الدول العربيه من استراليا من كندا من لندن وللعلم نحن مؤسسه غير ربحيه يعني نون بروفيت اورجانيزيشن اللي بحب يتبرع لنا وي ار بارت وي ار ريدي فور ذات هيئتنا الاداريه تتالف من الفقير لله تعالى رئيسا الدكتور نبيل الخطيب العميد السابق لكلية الآداب والعلوم الإنسانية في الجامعة اللبنانية في بيروت نائبا للرئيس السيدة حنان شرارة أمينة للسر السيد وسام شرف الدين أمينا للصندوق والأعضاء الدكتور هاني بواردي والدكتور وسام المليجي وهما أستاذان في جامعة يو اف ام ديربون الأستاذ علي أديب أستاذ اللغة العربية في جامعة نيويورك الشاعر الأستاذ رامي كنعان الشاعر الأستاذ ياسر سعد والإعلامي الأستاذ قاسم دغمان بتمنى من الزملاء اللي موجودين هون يوقفوا بس حتى الناس تتعرف عليهم تفضل اللي موجودين هون كما يشرفنا أيها الأحبة أن تقفوا إلى جانبنا أن تتعاونوا معنا سيما وأننا نسعى إلى الإضاءة على ما تواجهه هذه الجالية من تحديات وهموم وقضايا وما أمسيتنا هذه الليلة إلا نموذجا لما نقوم به علما أننا نظمنا أمسية مطلع شهر شباط الماضي وكانت مع قاضي قضاة مدينة تيربون الدكتور سالم سلام ومن حيث المبدا يفترض ان تكون امسيتنا للشهر المقبل مع رئيس بلديه ديربون هايتس بالبزي ايها الاحبه يمكن للقطاع الطبي ان يشفي اجسادنا من الامراض والاوبئه ويمكن لقطاع المحاماه ان يساعد في حل المشاكل العالقة بين الناس ولكن 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 لا شيء يمكنه أن يشفي مجتمعنا وجاليتنا ويساعد في بنائها وتدعيمها مثل القطاع التربوي أهم قطاع على الإطلاق على الإطلاق هو قطاع التربية والتعليم صحيح أن بيوتنا هي الأسس الأولى لتربية أبنائنا وتنشئتهم لكن مدارسنا تحمل الكثير من الأهمية في مجال التربية والتنشئة والتعليم هنا في المدارس تتفتح عيون أبنائنا أكثر على الحياة تشتد هنا سواعدهم تقوى عقولهم تعلو أحلامهم وآمالهم ببناء مستقبل أفضل لذا كانت أمسيتنا هذه للإضاءة على تجربة رائدة 
تقوم بها مقاطعة كريستود التعليمية أيها الأحبة لست أدري وأنا متأكد أنه معظمكم بوافقني الرأي نحن بكل بكل موقع نذهب باتجاه السلبيات ما بعرف ليش لا نضيء إلا على ما يسيغنا ما بعرف ليش ليش بنحب نجلد حالنا كمان ما بعرف ليش ونتناسى كثيرا الجوانب الإيجابية نحن يا أحبتي لن نفعل كما النعامة التي تغرس رأسها في الرمل كي لا ترى بالعكس نحن تماما نرى نرى جيدا أن المشهد تربوي ليس سليما تماما ونعلم أن هناك كثير من التحديات ولكن 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 ينبغي ألا نغمض أعيننا على الإنجازات التربوية الهائلة التي تشهدها هذه الجالية أنا بتذكر أول مرة جيت على ديرمون كان سنة 2004 يعني من تقريبا 19 سنة يوم ما تعينت قنصل عام بديترويت يومتها ما بتذكر كان في بعد فضاط منتخبي صحيح يا سيد ما كانش بعد ما كان في بعد حتى بورد ممبرز بتذكر كان في سرعينه سوزان سرعينه سوزان سرعينه الكتد اوفيشلز كان في بعد بتذكر منيح كان في عبد هيدوس رئيس بلديه وين سيتي هلا اطلعوا حواليك عن جد شيء بكبر القلب كريستود بورد كم سبع سبع ممبرز حسن كم في عنا من اصلهم عرب 6 اوت اوف 7 طلعوا على الببليك على على معظم المايرز بديرهم بديرهم هايز بهام ترامك من اصول عربيه وهكذا شوفوا عدد الاطباء والمحامين والصيادله والمهندسين وال 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 وال, وال. ما في محل بتروح عليه بديرهم او بديرهم هايز الا بتلاقي حواليك الدكتور كذا الدكتور كذا كلهم من اصل عربي هول بالله بالله على طريق اهل الجنوب، من وين كانوا بدهم يجوا هوا؟ لولا هذا القطاع التربوي الرائع والمهم ان كان بكريستود والله بديرهم عن جد انا من قلبي بدي اوجه لكم كلكم لاعضاء البورد تحيه من كل قلبي لو سمحتوا. سنناقش الليلة أيها الأحبة مع ضيوفنا التحديات التي يواجهها القطاع التربوي ولا سيما في كريستود تتعلق هذه التحديات بالدور الذي تقوم به المجالس التربوية إدارات المدارس حاجات هذه المدارس و شوفوا بلاش نكذب على بعض كلكم بتعرفوا حجم الهوة الجاب الفجوة كبيرة إن كان بين الأهل وبين أولادهم، أنا من مدة كنت عم بحكي لأخينا حسن أب طفل عمل مشكلة على على صحيح إنه حامل تليفون بالصف بعثنا وراء عمل مشكلة مع المعلم بعثنا وراء البي عملوا له لبي يقول لك يا حبيبي على الأقل على الأقل ما تخلي ابنك يحمل تليفون يجيبه من إيده بس يكون عم يدرس ببيت قال لي أنا أتجرأ أب لا يتجرأ أن ينتزع تليفون من ايد ابنه بعطي نموذج في جاب كبير كان بين الاهل واولادهم بين الاهل والمدارس بين المدارس والطلاب في هذه الامسيه سنحاول الاضاءه عليها ضيوفنا الليله كل اسم بذكره بتمنى انه يتفضل عنا على المسرح الدكتور يوسف مسلم المشرف العام لمدارس مقاطعه كريستود التعليميه تفضل السيدة دانيال زياد رئيسة المجلس التربوي لمقاطعة كريستود التعليمية. الأستاذ حسن سميح بيضون نائب رئيس المجلس التربوي لمقاطعة كريستود الأستاذ روني عبد الهادي مدير ثانوية كريستود. و خي حسن إذا حكيت كلمتين حلوين عنك بتزعل 
سيكون لكل من الضيوف الكرام ما بين خمسة إلى سبع دقائق to come to the podium ليحكي اللي عندهم ونتمنى على الضيوف الكرام أن يتحدثوا بالعربية هذه شغلتنا يعني بال... وإذا كان الأمر صعبا لا بأس من خوض من مزج الحديث باللغتين وأمن ما يتبقى من الأم سياسة نخصصه للأسئلة والأجوبة والأسئلة ستكون كتابة حتى نستفيد قدر أكبر من الوقت بداية سنكون مع الدكتور يوسف مسلم تفضل يوسف السلام عليكم السلام I know I was told I need to speak in Arabic and in English but I'm going to do everybody in the audience a favor and only speak in English so I I can tell you the stories about how many times my parents wanted me to learn Arabic. They would drop me off somewhere to learn Arabic, but then I would never show up to class. But I don't want any of our students to hear that. My name is Yusuf Masalim. I am you, you are me. This is our community. In 2019, I had the honor and the privilege to apply for, interview, and receive the superintendency of the Crescent School District. It was an honor. One of the greatest honors I've ever had. Not to be a superintendent, but to be somebody that represents our community in a leadership role that will ensure that every single one of our children will have the best education they can have. But no matter what, and how easy and wonderful that sounds, it's not easy. It is a challenge. And the challenges that we face are no different than the challenges that are faced across the nation right now, especially after COVID. And in order to overcome our challenges, and in order for us to truly help our children get to the next level, to truly be our next set of multimillionaires, CEOs, doctors, lawyers, plumbers, whatever it may be, like Dr. Ajumi said, what has to happen is we have to do it together. We have to be unified. We have to be a single power. There is no person on this stage right now who does not care about those children more than anybody else in this world. You see, because all of us, when we're asked, how many children do you have? I literally respond and say, I don't know, about 4,029. And then they're like, no, how many children do you have at home? And I'm like, four. This is what we are. We will, and our focus is, that every single child has the safest and best opportunity to find success in our school district. And I am excited and I am so happy and I thank Mr. And Dr. Ajimi for having us here tonight. And I just want to conclude with this before we move on. In March of 2020, we had to close down our schools. The pandemic, and I always reiterate to you, this is a pandemic. It's across the world, it's global. We truly identified during that pandemic where us as a district and a community had gaps as Dr. Ajimi mentioned. And we are continuing to do everything in our power to close those gaps. And there are a lot of people in this audience right now who are unsung heroes. And there are a lot of people in the Crestwood community who are unsung heroes that do a lot of things behind the scenes to help our children. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to our conversation. والآن مع شو مع نائب رئيس المجلس التربوي الأستاذ حسن سميح بيدو تفضل السلام عليكم أنا اسمي حسن سميح بيدو ابن الحجب وهذا أول شيء يعني على العربي شوي مقصر بس يعني حنعمل قد ما فيه اول شيء بحب اتشكر دكتور علي عجمي استاذ حسن بزي جاري ابو نادر و سبورتس فور سبونسرينج ذا ايفنت 
Ahmad Mike Mackey, thank you. Um, I want to thank everyone and the Arab American Museum for having us today. Uh, on behalf of the whole board, thank you. Um, I know I'm President Al Zayat is going to speak and close it out for us on behalf of the board, so she will have a lot more things to say for sure. Um, أنا اشترينا أول بيت بديربون هايتس أنا وجوزتي ريتا ب 2009 صار عندنا صوفيا 12 سنة وعلي 10 سنين وميلا 8 سنين سو so أول شيء بجينا على المنطقة بصراحة ما كان ما نعرف حدا تعرفنا على أبو نادر بالأول بس عرفنا أبو نادر الجار تغير كل شيء يعني النظر كله تغير بس آه عن جد آه I work بشتغل بجنرال موتورز بالتجارة آه صرت بي جي ام من الـ 2008 آه عجلة آه بعمل كوتش للفوتبول بالرياضة بكراسوود بلشنا بريفرسايد بـ 2010 و ضليت نتقدم شوي شوي مع الاولاد ونتحسن ويعني نتقوى بهالشيء برياضه وصرنا اني كوتش بكراس وود هلا بالهاي سكول تخرجت من الجامعه ب 2006 من يونيفرستي اوف ميشيغان وهلا بدي احكي شوي عن المدينه ديربورن هايتس ومطرح وين كنا وين صرنا بالاول ب 2016 ما كان في ولا ولا حدا من الجاليه على مجلس التربيه هذا اول شيء اول بورد ممبر اللي دخل كانت ناديه بري وهلا صرنا سته ست اصوات عندنا بريزيدنت رئيسه المجلس دانيال الزيات دانيال بتجيب هلا هي بديربورن و the head of the health and safety and security of Dearborn schools بس من قبلها كانت بالوين كاونتي هوم اند سكيورتي يعني هلا عندنا حاج بلال ايمن هو على البورد من شغله من لما هو صغير عرفته بيشتغل مع الاولاد مع الاطفال برياضه كمان هلا هو معنا على البورد حاج محمد سباق هلا هو على البورد كمان حاج محمد بشغل one of the largest banks in the world you have also David Williamson okay David Williamson بجيب تفكيره بحب الشغايل مش بس الرياضة بحب الباند وبحب الثيتر وبيساعد كمان وعندك هلا سلوى فواز، سلوى فواز تشتغل بفورد موتور كومباني. اجان تفكيري غير كمان. سو so, هلا اذا بنطلع نحن كل الشقف مع بعض. كل واحد لحال يقدر بيكون قوي بالشغايل اللي هو مهم فيهم. بس مع بعضنا هلا نحن قوية وعندك احلى سوبر انتندنت بالعالم هو حج يوسف مصالة اوكي بدي احكي شوي عن دكتور مصالة دكتور مصالة بس تعرفت عليه قبل ما انا اتدخل بالسكول بورد تعرفت عليه شوي من من الرياضه وبالفوتبول وشفت انه هو بيظل كيف بيقولوا بيظل قوي وبيظل صوته طالع وبيظل عم بيجرب يشتغل على الشغايل انه مرات ما فيك توصلي على الاخر بس هو بس بيحط براسه شيء بديش اقول الكلمه اي نو يو جايز ار ثينكينج بس بس بيحط براسه شيء بيدفش قد ما فيه وبياخذ الجالي كل حواليه ليتقوى لينجح وهلا اللي جابنا هون اليوم هذه هاشتاج هالشغله وهالتفكير يعني انا كل كل الانسان بيعمل غلط، كل انسان. بس انا بقول مرات الحمد لله مطرح ما انا 
لانه اذا انا بفكر بالغلط او بعمل غلط او شيء بيصير عندي خيي يوسف وعندي خيي بلال وعندي اختي دانيال وعندي الجماعه اللي قاعدين وراي واللي قبالي بجربوا يساعدونا لنتقوى مع بعض وهذه الشغله اللي بدي احكي عنها عن وين بدنا نروح هلا بتشوفوا في شغايل كثير بكراس وود عم تتصلح بتشوفوا الجرافات برا عم بيجربوا الارض في شغايل كثير عم عم تساوي والتاكس تاعون ال... تاعون ال... اللي بيوت ما غلي هذه شغله بترجع لدكتور مصالم والادمنستريشن تبعه هو اخترع ولقى طريقه ليصرف المصاري على الاولاد وعلى البنايات وعلى يعني هذه المدينه تبعنا ليقويها بلا ما يغلى على عن العالم كله هذه الشغايل كلها لانه المجلس وراه مش بس هيك جاريتنا بتظل وراه لانه في ثقه في ثقه مش بس نحن بنوثق فيه هو بيوثق فينا كمان هودي هالشغايل كلها مهمه وبصراحة أنا يعني بضلني أقول لأولادي بقول لكل العالم نحن نيالنا اللي عايشين هون أولادنا لأنه بيروحوا على كراسفورد بعد في شغايل كثير ما نعملها بعد في يعني النظر لقدام بس إذا إذا فيكم توصلوا لكل شيء يعني ما حطيناش النظر لأبعد لازم نضل يبعد النظر كل ما نقرب لازم نبعد ولازم نضلنا نقوي بعضنا ونقوي جاليتنا ونقوي اللي حوالي حوالينا وباخر شيء يعني اتس هوم كراس وود از هوم ثانك يو والان سنكون مع دون عبد الهادي روني مدير مدرسه ثانويه كريستو تفضل حسن انا مش خايفك السلام عليكم انا عبد الهادي معكم انا ابن حج الشوقي عبد الهادي من ضياء الفرعشي so i'm going to speak in english for two very very valid reasons not that my arabic is not that good it's decent It's decent, but I'm going to speak in English for two valid reasons. One, my wife is uh, my lovely wife is here, and she is very fluent in Arabic. Uh, she used to translate in Arabic, actually, and she's just waiting for those miscues to kind of <laughs> let me hear about it every day for the rest of my life. So that's the second, the first thing. Second valid reason is my uncle Sam Salami is in the audience, and I do not want to be the punchline <laughs> for family dinners for the next five years. <laughs> I'd like to start off by thanking Dr. Ali Hajami, the Arab American National Museum, uh, Mike Mackey, who is for uh, uh, hosting this event. Uh, I so strongly believe that the dialogue we have here tonight is going to be fruitful and very important dialogue because uh, not only at Crestwood, but in our neighboring districts and districts all across the state, even across the country, the challenges are very huge for education especially after COVID and everything that transpired during that time. And uh, there can't be a stronger than, message than bridging that gap between the community, community between the parents and the schools to build uh, that strong partnership that's really going to be beneficial and fruitful to our children in the future. Uh, I came to the Crestwood District in 2020. I've been there for a little over, well, about two years now. And I used to work uh, with Dr. Masalam in the Dearborn District. And I knew what type of man he was. I knew what type of educational leader he was. And I saw and believed his vision from when we were at Fortson. And when this position became available, I didn't even have to think for more than five seconds about it, that this is what I want to apply for. This is the man I want to follow. And thanks to him, thanks to the Board of Education uh, for giving us the resources and everything we need to really move uh, Crestwood District to the next level. It will move to the next level. I have no doubt in that whatsoever uh, under his leadership and I'm proud to be part of this district and uh, I want to thank you all tonight for joining us and
helping us uh, move not only our school, but just the dialogue to move all our uh, children to the next level. Thank you. Daniel, it's your turn now. Come. Uh, Daniel Ziyad, the East Board, uh, Crestwood Education Board. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marhaba wa ahla sahna fikum. I'd like to thank you all for having us here today, and I want to thank you all for participating in this event today. Uh, I do see out in the crowd that we do have some Crestwood employees from our Crestwood family. If uh, you could please stand and be recognized, I won't name you all, but I'd like you all to stand and be recognized, please. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Um, so my name is Danielle El Zayat. My maiden name is Mackie. I'm from Bintish Bir. Hassan Bazi threatened me and told me that I had to tell everybody that. My mother is from Tibnin. I'm pretty well-rounded in that sense. My husband is from Syria. I have to go home and sleep in that house today, so I'll tell you that too. So I'm like a mutt. You get a little bit of everything with me. So I wanted to take some time, and Hassan did a great job talking about the board and uh, you know what everybody brings to the table on the board and you know كيف عم نحاول انه مش بس ندرس اولادنا بس عم نحاول انه نربي اولادنا بس ما فينا نعملها لحالنا انه نحن عايزين مساعده من الاهالي الاهالي اهم شيء اهم شيء انا لما كنت صغيره بالبيت يعني بي كان يقلنا إنه في أخلاق إنه في أخلاق ما فيك تمشي بهالدنيا بلا أخلاق و يعني بس you know صرت ربي ولادي أنا إنه جربت أقول قد ما فيي وجربت أعلمهم عن الأخلاق لأن المدرسة عم بتدرس عم بيقروا عم بيعملوا math بيعملوا science و social studies بس الأهالي بالبيت أهم شيء فأنا عم بوقف قدامكم اليوم بسأل إنه الأهالي يجوا على المدارس إذا بدهم مساعدة بشيء نحن منساعدهم نحن منحاول نساعدهم إنه ما فينا نربي ولادنا لحالنا كان بأيام القديمة إنه ال... يعني الضيعة المدينة كل العالم بيربوا ولادهم مع بعض فأنا إذا عندي ولد وحدا إجا وش شاف غلط بابني او ببنتي فيحكي معهم هن هلا عم شوف الناس ان حدا حكى مع اولادهم بيزعلوا دغري لا مش ابني لا مش بنتي كنا نوثق بالمدارس انه يحكوا مع اولادنا وكنا نحن نخاف انه حدا من الـ من المعلمه او المدير يتلفن على البيت كنا نحن نخاف لأن بنعرف إنه أمي أو بي وأهلنا كانوا رح يعيطوا علينا كان كانوا كانوا يزعلوا مننا فهلا عم شوف عم لاحظ إنه إذا المدارس بتلفنوا على البيت وبدهم يحكوا مع الأهالي الأهالي دغري بيزعلوا ما بدهم يسمعوا أي شيء وما بدهم يصدقوا إنه أولادهم عملوا شيء غلط بس أنا بدي أقول لهم إنه كل ولد بيغلط كل ولد بيغلط ما في ولد واقف بالمدرسة أو عم بيروح على المدرسة وما بيغلط وما ليش إذا غلط إذا الولد ما غلط كيف بدنا نصلح الولد إنه كيف بدنا نقول لهم إنه هيك غلط بس تعب بدنا نعمل هالشي بدنا نصح كل صح كل شيء هذا أهم شيء ما بدي حدا يفهمني غلط انه عم بقول انه الاهالي صاروا ما عم بيربوا ولادهم، لا ما عم بقول هيك بس عم بقول انه بدنا نهتم بالولاد اكثر اكثر انا وجوزي من شي عشر سنين بلشنا جمعيه الامري فاونديشن فلقينا انه ولادنا بالبيت عم بيتربوا بين ولاد بس انه ما كانوا يعرفوا قيمه الدولار ما كانوا يعرفوا قيمه الشغل ما كانوا عم يفهموا بقيمة ال... يعني تشارك مع العالم مع الجيران مع الجالية فنحن حاولنا انه نبلش هذا الجمعية لنعلم اولادنا هالشي 
ويعني اهلا وسهلا فيكم اذا بدكم تجيبوا اولادكم اذا حدا بيحب يساعد اذا بدكم مساعده نحن بنساعد بالمدارس بس نحن عايزين اورجنايزيشنز مثل الاميري فاونديشن مثل زمان انترناشونال اورجنايزيشنز مثل الي سبورتس خي احمد مكي يعني كل الاولاد عارفين اذا بدهم شيء اذا عايزين شيء بيروحوا على انه في محمد موجود والعالم اللي بيشتغلوا معه احمد موجود وبيشتغلوا معه وهن بيحاولوا يساعدوهم فبس كنت حابه احكي عن هالشيء وكمان بدي اتشكر على عجمي وخي حسن بزدي راني حسن يوسف نحن عن جد وي ار تروي ا لوكي كوميونتي وي ار بلس We have so much good in this community. And I would say out of, you know, 100%, we have 10% that we really need to work on. But nobody can do it alone. We need everybody to work together. And it's a whole community approach. The whole community approach means everybody who has a stake in the community works together to lift the community up. And that's really what we need. So it takes a partnership. And the partnership is the parents at home, the people in school, the business owners, okay? The business owners, the organizations, everybody working together to uplift our community. And that's what I call on our community to do today. So thank you for listening to my words. I appreciate it. I'd like uh, to apologize for my Arabic and English, which is Arabize, if you haven't heard. Um, and uh, thank you. مسك الختام مع السيد حسن بزي تفضل السلام عليكم جميعا اي عمل اي انسان بده يقوم فيه اهم شيء انه يؤمن بالعمل اللي بده يقوم فيه قلت اللي لازم الانسان يكون عنده ايمان برقوة بكل شيء وبعدين باي عمل بده يقوم فيه. مسيره طويله بلشنا فيها بمقاطعه كريستوود بدي اتطرق لبعض النقاط قبل ما ابدا الحديث بدي اتشكر سعاده السفير الدكتور علي عجمي على الجهد اللي عم بيقوم فيه والمركز العربي الامريكي للثقافي والفنون والمنتدى الثقافي في ديربون وجميع الاعضاء على هذه الاستضافه لالنا لنبحث بامور ومناقشه الامور التربويه لمقاطعه كريستو في مدينه ديربون هايتس كان العنوان التحديات ما بيعني هذا انه شيء سلبي بالعكس ابدا التحديات ممكن تكون ايجابيه في اشياء كثير بنعرفها بس في اشياء كمان لازم نتعلمها. فكلمه التحديات شويه كانت سئلت عنها فان شاء الله الاشياء الايجابيه بتكون خلال هالنقاش الليله. والسؤال الثاني اللي سئلته انه ليش بالمركز العربي بالمتحف هون او بخارج مدينه ديربون هايتس او خارج مقاطعه كريستو بالتحديد ما في اي شخص يمكن اذا بدي سمي الا ما كان له علاقه بالمركز العربي الامريكي المركز العربي هو تاريخ لجاليتنا كلنا اشتغلنا فيه وكثير نحن فخورين ونعتز انه عندنا مركز مثل المتحف هون خاصه المتحف المتحف العربي الامريكي بنوجه له تحيه كثير كبيره بدي اشكر المجلس التربوي لمدينة كريستوت ممثل برئيسة المجلس السيدة دانيال الزيات ونائب الرئيس نائب رئيسة المجلس الأستاذ حسن بيدون على الجهد اللي عم بيعملوه مع باقي أعضاء المجلس التربوي وبحب كمان أشكر بشكل خاص صديق العزيز المشرف العام السوبر انتندنت دكتور جون مسلم يوسف مسلم والشكر ايضا موصول ل 
هيدي مهمة كبيرة كمان من وقت اللي الشخص بيتعامل مع طلاب كثيرة أستاذ رامي عبد الهادي على الجهد اللي بيحطه كل يوم. و بدي اعتبر كمان الفرصة تحت تالي حي الطاقم كله من الأساتذة من المعلمين من من فوق لتحت يعني لحتى أصغر موظف فيهم، هذا جهد كبير عم بيقوموا فيه وعندهم أمانة كبيرة أكبر أمانة ممكن إنه أي بي أو أم أو أي شخص يسلم الأمانة لأشخاص بيوثق فيهم، الأمانة هي أولادنا عم نسلمهم أولادنا وهن قدها المسؤولية إن شاء الله ب بعملهم وبشغلهم وبرؤيتهم للمستقبل لهالمقاطعة هيدي الشكر للأهالي كمان اللي عم بيبذلوا جهد كبير إنه بيحاولوا يتواصلوا مع ال مع الإدارة يتواصلوا مع المجلس التربوي ودي نوه بشخصين أو ثلاثة مع احترامي للكل يعني كل واحد بيبذل جهد بخلال مسيرتنا كنا مجموعة كبيرة رح اتطرق لبعض المواضيع بس بشكل خاص بدي اتشكر احدى السيدات اللي وقفت معنا بمسيرتنا وقت اللي كنا عم نعاني بمقاطعه كريسكود كمان رح اذكرها هلا وتقدمت واعطت وقت من جهدها ومن بيتها ومن عائلتها وكانت دائما تكون معنا موجوده وكانت الصوت المدوي مثل ما نقول بوقت الاجتماعات هلا حاليا كانت عضو بالمجلس التربوي هلا رئيسة البي تي اي البي تي اي في ريفر سايد السيده نجاح جنوب بليز ثانك يو فور اول اوف يو ديت اول اوف يو و مشان ما يفوتني كمان اشخاص كثير اشتغلوا بتقدم هالدستريكت و... وشخص كثير عزيز على قلبي يعني كان يترك شغله ويجي يشتغل معنا دائما يكون موجود ويتابع الامور وجهد كبير هو الصديق زهير عبد الحق شكرا زهير على التقييم وايضا الشكر موصول لصديقي الاستاذ عدنان سلامي كمان الاستاذ عدنان حط وقت كثير وجهد كبير مجرد التنويه بهالاشخاص هيدي انه بحث الاشخاص الثانيين انه يتقدموا هذه آه مسيره طويله عم نمشي فيها يعني هلا موجود عندنا مجلس تربوي يمكن اي شخص يكون عنده ظروف او يمكن بده يترك المجلس فنحن كاهل ككوميونتي كاكتيفست انه لازم نكون دائما موجودين لحتى نساعدهم كلهم وقت اللي بنحكي انه الاشخاص اللي اللي بيقدموا بيساعدوا آه شخص آه بيعطي وقت بيعطي جهد وهو يمكن من احد الاشخاص موجود بمدينتنا بديربون هايتس بعتز كثير بصداقته على الاشياء اللي بقدمها للمقاطعه للهاي سكول صاحب مؤسسه اليت سبورتس والسبونسر لهيدي الليله صديقي احمد مكي احمد ثانك يو فور اول اوف يو و عن اذنك دكتور علي يعني بتشكر الاخ اسماعيل جمعه و اسماعيل كمان العباس الشعب وكل الاشخاص اللي عم بي اللي تفضلوا معنا الليله. شغلتين بدي اقولهم المسيره كانت طويله كثير، طويله 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 كثير. يعني وقت اللي بلشنا كان بلشت قصه الاي اس ال ثناء اللغه. كان البورد القديم يعني ما بديش هلا نلومهم ونرجع يمكن ما كان عندهم فكره عن نوعيه الجاليه اللي يعني بلشت الجاليه تنمو بدير بديربون هايتس وبلشت بقصه الاي اس ال اجوا كثير طلاب وصارت الهجره في ناس ما بتحكيش عربي وصار في صراع صراع يعني كثير قوي وتدخلت وزاره العدل الامريكيه وصار في اجتماعات نحن وياها ومن هون بلشت القصه رحنا اول اجتماع على المجلس التربوي كان باللايبرري ب بثانويه كريسكوت فتنا مجموعه سبعه ثمانيه عشر اشخاص طلعوا فينا انه من اي كوكب جايين نحن بحياتهم ما شافوا يعني من الاهالي يجوا وير يو جايز كامينج فروم ما كان في كرسي نقعد عليها ما كان في كرسي نقعد عليها قلنا لهم يعني انه في امور بدنا نحكيها وكذا اول شيء ما اخذونا بشكل جدي قلت لها لرئيسه المجلس التربوي كان صغير موجود، كان عدنان، كان في اشخاص، قلت لها بوعدك من هلا وبالرايح كل اجتماع رح تشوفينا هون، واتمنى انه يكون في كراسي لنقعد عليها. وبدانا المسيره، مسيره كانت طويله. 
قصة الاي اس ال وصلت لانه اجتمعنا كذا مرة مع وزارة العدل الامريكية وبعتقد هلا يمكن دكتور مسلم انه خلصت البروبيشن. Is it true? Very close. Very close. يعني هيدي كانت نقطة كثير جوهرية تحت لي نبلش نحن وياهم. حكينا بقصة الأكل. قصة الأكل الحلال يعني كان بلشت الجالية تنمو، بلش العرب والمسلمين يفوتوا يعني ما في شيء غلط الديموغرافيه كلها تغيرت بالديرمان هايتس انه بده يروح الصبي بده ياكل او كذا ما طلع يعني ناس كمان من الاكل اكلنا الامريكان ووقفوا قال يعني اللي بده ياكل ياكل جيبوا الاكل وقلنا لهم بدكم مساعده بدكم شيء يعني كانت هيدي من احد الاشياء وصلنا لقصه اللغه العربيه يعني كثير مهمه هيدي كمان قصه انه انوجدت بالمدارس ووصلت لمرحله كان في زيرو عضو من من السبعه من من العرب صار في ترشح يعني بلشت بسيده واندا سعد بهذيك الايام ما حلف الحظ صار في فراغ بالمجلس التربوي هذه كثير نقطه كنت مارق من حد ريفر ريفر سايد في احد اعضاء المجلس كان عم يشتغل هونيك وهو عضو وجينا بحثنا على القصه طلع في كونفليكت ام استقال فحكينا نحن وياهم واول شخص عين كان المحامي حميد سويدان لفتره بعدين اجت زينب حسين ترشحت هيدا آه كمان نقاش كبير انه وقت اللي بيصير فيه التصويت يعني ما بعرف ليش بعد عنا هالعاده هيدي يعني لازم لازم نظهر لازم نحط اولادنا ونحن انه نظهر نصوت لحتى نغير ومشيت القصص لوصلت لمرحله انه المدارس صار الديستريكت صار بدهم باند باند من من سنه 1967 ما قدروا مرة باند سنس 1967 they tried to pass a bond never succeeded so عملنا لجنه اشتغلنا حطينا وقت وجهد ووقفنا بايام البرد وطرقنا كل البيوت ودفعنا مصاري نشحت الباند ب 35 مليون دولار يعني كانت اول باند واثبتنا انه اذا فينا نكرر شيء بدنا نعمله عملناه ونجحت الباند وصار في تحسين على باي عمل بيصير فيه شويه لغط ما رح نوقف عندها ان شاء الله اذا كان في شويه حكي هلا بالنسبه لباند جديده لحتى نحصل المدارس يعني لحتى الجالي تقدر تشتغل مع المجلس التربوي لازم يكون في تعاطي من من الجهتين الرياضه شغلة كثير مهمة بعرف انه هلا الادارة والبورد عم بيحاولوا كمان يعني كل هالامور هيدي ما رح تمشي لحالها وكمان البورد ما رح فيه لحاله والمدرسة ما رح تفيد لحالها هون بيجي دور والدور المهم والدور الاساسي هو دور الاهل لازم الاهل ينتبهوا لازم يتفاعلوا مع الادارة مع المجلس التربوي مسيرة طويلة امرقنا فيها بتمنى انه نتابع بتمنى انه من الاهالي يجوا على الاجتماعات اذا حدا عنده كونسرن اذا حدا عنده اي اي سؤال امريكا كلها فيها مشاكل المدارس كلها فيها مشاكل. ايه بيصير مشاكل بكريستود مش عم نقول لا ما رح تخبوا ولا اصبعنا يعني يمكن هيدا وقت لحتى لي بتمنى باسم الشخصي باسم الاشخاص اللي اللي مشوا بهالمسيره انه المجلس التربوي يكون متضامن مع بعضه بيصير في تباين بالرؤيه بيصير في افكار مختلفه معلش هي طبيعيه هيدي انه بتمنى انه يوقفوا وقفه وحده لحتى لي يكونوا دعم وسند للاداره كثير محظوظين انه اجى لعنا مشرف عام سوبر انتندنت بيفهمنا بيفهم الكلتشر تبعيتنا بيفهم اولادنا بيفهم يتعامل معنا نحن كثير محظوظين بكريستو ديستريكت انه عندنا دكتور يوسف مسلم ام فيري براود اند وي ار فيري هابي تو هاي دكتور مسلم بورد اوكيشن دانيال سيد دانيال يعني من احد الاشخاص نحكي اوقات بنختلف بشغلات معينه بس بننهي الحديث دائما بطريقه كثير وديه دائما بنحكي نحن وحسن الشباب اللي بنفتخر فيهم واللي عن جد مثل ما ذكرت باول حديث واللي بحطوا وقت كثير يعني يعني شغله صعبه كثير راني يعني ما في علاقه قديمه كثير نحن وياهم بدي اقول قديش محظوظين 
خلينا ناخذ ادفانتج من البورد اللي موجود من الاداره اللي موجوده ونساعدهم ونوقف معهم بشكركم بشكر حضوركم بشكرك اجين دكتور علي وبعتذر اذا تاخرت واهلا وسهلا فيك <تصفيق> طبعا انا بنبلش بالاسئله هلا اذا اي حدا من الجمهور عنده عنده اسئله راح راح تكون الاسئله كتابه يا ما ايش في سؤال يا دكتور يوسف صار في مشكلة مؤخرا بكريست روت هاي سكول بولي اوكي وهذا مش بس صار بكريست روت بتصير بكل المدارس اني واي هاو كود وي فيس ذيس تشالنج هلا نو جود اوكي سم تايمز ذا سمبل ثينجز بولي Let's talk about bullying real quick. Bullying is a problem, has been a problem for many, many years. As a community, we have just, in the last few years, started to take on the task of trying to reduce bullying. But I'd like to talk about it from two standpoints. When a child, or even an adult, bullies, and the child or the adult who is on the receiving end of the bullying. There are two things that we must do. Number one, we must understand why the child or the adult is committing the bullying. Because when a child or even an adult commits bullying, there are deeper underlying needs for that child. And a lot of times what people like to do is they like to see that child receive a consequence. But a consequence doesn't resolve the problem. And we have to work with that child for that child to be able to understand how to get their feelings across. For the child or the adult who is on the receiving end of bullying, we have to teach them how to be resilient, how to face adversity, how to handle those type of situations. Everyone in this audience at some point either as a child or even now as an adult, has faced adversity and has had to overcome that adversity. And if we teach children at a young age and how to be resilient and how to face adversity, we will teach them success, not for tomorrow only, but for years to come. This is the struggle. And where we can bridge that gap is the communication and the support with parents to have those conversations on how to help their children on both ends. Additionally, when we talk about these types of situations, we are always going from the standpoint of how do we teach? How do we inform? How do we help? And that takes time. And that's a process that takes patience. And the one thing I've learned, I've been in this business now since 1998. I've been in administration since 2006. The one thing that I have learned over time is that when you deal with children, you have to be patient. When you deal with parents, you have to be patient. And that patience has to be with each other. This is something that will be here forever. It is not something that we will end but we can end it with each individual child as they struggle through it. I hope that answers the question. Daniel. You know, there are a lot of challenges in our A lot of challenges. By priority, which comes number one, number two, number three? So we do face a lot of challenges. Um, Nothing is perfect, right? So we want to try to identify our gaps and we want to bridge those gaps. And I think the number one priority on everybody's mind, whether you're at the school, working in the school, or whether you're a parent at home who has a child in the school, or whether you're the child who's the student in the school, I feel the number one priority is health, safety, and security. So if our students are not healthy, and if they're not safe, and if they don't feel secure, 
they're not going to be able to learn to their full potential. So I believe that that's a major priority. Um, another major priority would be getting our students um, up to skill for the two years that they suffered from the pandemic. That's not an easy job to do, and it's not going to be something that's done overnight. I know that that's going to take us in the schools and you at home working together to help our students um, make up for what they lost. And it's not that they're behind, it's just that we want them to be more advanced, right? So two years of uncertainty for a child is a tremendous, tremendous amount, okay, of stress for them to carry around, let alone the parents dealing with it. And we're dealing with students now who have come back to the school, things are supposed to be back to normal, and they're not. Because everybody has a little bit of that post-traumatic stress that they're dealing with from those two years of loss. So, so I would say that's another priority for us, is getting students back up to par. Um, I think another priority for us, a major one, is building an athletic facility that's safe for our students. And um, if you guys drive by the high school, you can see the progress that's been made on that. And, um, you know, I'm happy myself that that's being done. We did, so here's another challenge, is when everybody in the community isn't on the same page with how to move forward on a project, right? Some people think spend money on something, don't spend money on something. And I say to everybody, we need to make decisions that are good for the students in the district, not just my student or Hassan's student or Rani's student or Yusuf's child. We need to make decisions for all the students in the district. Um, my daughter has problems from 2017 on the whole right side of her body from the way that our field was. So when I see that field, uh, you know, progressing and, and becoming a safer place for our kids, to do athletics on that field, to have gym class on that field. We have outside organizations that come and use that field. That makes me feel better that they'll be safer. Um, I think another priority that we have is working with our community, bringing in our community partners so our students know who they are, so that our staff know who they are, and Dr. Mosalam and his team do an excellent job doing that. We want everybody to realize that the Crestwood District isn't just our buildings and our students and our teachers. The Crestwood District is everybody who contributes and is a part of that district, and that's what I was talking about earlier with our whole community. So I, I feel that these are priorities for our district. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, I, I spoke about uh, the gap. Dr. Yusuf spoke about the gap. Who do you think holds responsibility? What is gap? Parents? So, I would say school, board? Yeah. So, I would say it's a community. It's me, it's you, it's Yusuf, it's the parents, it's the kids. Um, like I said earlier, um, we're stronger together. What does that mean? It's not cliche. Right now, I, I heard you ask Dr. Masalam and, and President El Zayat the challenges. Well, let me tell you, there's not only challenges, to me, they're, they're not challenges, they're areas of opportunity because nothing is perfect. And it's by human nature, when something becomes perfect, you want more. So then it doesn't, it's not perfect anymore to you, right? But let me tell you what is perfect that I see. What I see is the highway that's open. When I see when children need backpacks and jackets, they call on either trustee El, uh, President El Zayat or Emo with the Amity Foundation. He makes it happen. He does it in Dearborn, he does it in Dearborn Heights and many other cities all over Wayne County. Okay, that, that road, when, when the kids are practicing during sixth hour at Elite Sports and Ahmed Mecki opens the doors and they, these kids walk in, they don't have water, they don't have something and it's not about water. It's about the doors being open when they go in there because we don't have a facility big enough for all of our students at one point to be in the gym or whatnot. 
Many high schools have multiple gyms. We have one, right? And that, that not only goes to show you of the community support, right? But we can go on and on and on and talk about many other uh, businesses in the area. There's many, and I'm not going to name any more. But what I want to tell you is it's, it's, it's being open. That highway is open, but now we have to go. We have to drive down that road. And on the flip side, when you talk about challenges, to me, honestly, uh, I, never, I never say, I worked for someone when, when I was at GM. They, they never used the word where you could get better or what you're not doing right. They always use the word opportunity because it's there, but how do we make it better? We could always, you know, hindsight's 2020. So when I go back and I watch this, I'm going to say, wow, I should have said this or I should have said that. Although maybe my point came across, there's always a better way to do it. And I think at Crestwood, what we continue to do is move forward. And, and Trustee Alzayat touched on that earlier, right? How do we keep moving forward? And, and honestly, I'm going to ask you, Dr. Ali Ajami, not to use the word challenges anymore. Use the word opportunities when it comes to Crestwood. Because I can assure you, with the panel we have in place, with the administration that we have in place, with the parents that we have in place. Going from one end of the spectrum to the other, I really believe we have the, all the ingredients for success. Okay. Um, question about special education. What's been done to address the challenge of this? What have you done? Regarding yeah, schools, yeah. special education? Well, there's a multitude of, thing, thing, uh, multitude of things that we've done. As a district, uh, we've been given the resources and the tools. We've uh, allowed a lot of time through what we call a PLC process, which are professional learning communities. This is a set amount of time that teachers receive uh, on a weekly basis or through the district, through the professional development, that allows them to work together, to bring in people from the outside to provide support, coaching, and modeling of how to address not only the special education uh, in our schools about the ELL uh, students, our gen ed students, any student, any which way we can provide support for our students. These are all things that are built in through Dr. Masalam and what the administrative team has allowed us to do to help uh, support our students. Uh, we've even, uh, with our counseling department, the resources we've added to our high school, for example, like we, we which was never at Crestwood, we have a math literacy course that's in charge of uh, math, because we know reading and math are the two areas that we really need to concentrate because they bring everything else up together. So through adding a math uh, coach, through adding a language arts coach, and uh, adding staff, support staff, to meet the needs of st struggling students has given us all working together that opportunity to help address the concerns, the needs, and the areas of improvement that we've already seen gains from. Uh, and, you know, we have fun, but the biggest uh, and what we've learned from our experiences, funding, you put it into people. People provide those resources to help our students uh, reach the next level. Thank you. Hassan. I want to ask you, in your opinion, is this the majority of the and what is the or not? قبل ما جاوب على هذا السؤال دكتور علي سؤال كتير مهم باي ذا واي فاتني كمان انه التجربه الكبيره وقت اللي بنحكي بي بوقت الانتخابات انه لازم نطلع نصوت كان عندنا تجربه كمان مميزه بال 2016 وقت السيده ناديه بري ترشحت للانتخابات وكانت اول عضو مجلس تربوي بتنجح الجالية كلها وقفت معها لأنه كان التغيير بأوجه بوجه لها تحية من عن هالمنبر هيدا وكمان الأخ بلي من المجلس التربوي كمان بوجه لها التحية وتحية لجميع أعضاء المجلس التربوي. آه إذا كانوا كلهم متفقين في شيء غلط. It's not healthy. You know. آه مثل ما ذكرت بالأول أوقات آه التباين بوجهات النظر آه كثير معقولة آه مش ضروري يكونوا الكل متفقين على على نقطة معينة، منيح التنوع، منيح البحث، و... والأهالي أهالي لازم يكونوا كثير واعيين ولازم يلعبوا دور كبير بمساعدة المدرسة. يعني المجلس التربوي في سبع أعضاء 
لألا إنه الكل بيكونوا متفقين على رأي معين يمكن لا في شيء بيصوت نعم في شيء بيصوت لا وهذا هذا يعني بطبيعة الحال كتير كتير طبيعي وكتير هيلثي بتمنى إنه وقت اللي بنصير في تصويت على شغلات يعني بالنهاية أي شيء رح يعود لأولادنا أو لطلابنا بعتقد إنه دائما بأي اجتماع بيكونوا أمام امتحان جديد كمان لحتى لي بيكونوا قد المسؤولية يعني السبع أعضاء اللي موجودين على المجلس التربوي ما بيقبضوا مصاري كتير ما بيحطوا وقت يعني أكتريتهم إنه مثل تبرع بوقتهم فوقت اللي بيصير في نقاش بعتقد بالنهاية الصوت رح يصب بمصلحة طلابنا وإن شاء الله إنه منضل متفاهمين مع بعض وبتمنى بتمنى من الأهالي بتمنى إنه ما يحطوا براسهم بيخلص دورهم إذا وقت اللي بيوصلوا الولد على باب المدرسة بيحطوه وبيحملوا حالهم وبيفلوا لا بالعكس المدرسة ما فيها تربي الولد يعني الأهالي لازم يلعبوا دور لازم يسألوا أولادهم لازم يعرفوا إذا بيشوفوا شيء مش مظبوط بيسمعوا يعني عندنا مشكلة كبيرة بأمريكا بالمدارس مشكلة المخدرات يعني ما نحكي فيها هذه مشكلة كتير خطرة يعني لازم الأهل يحكوا مع الأولاد لازم يوعوهم وأنا بتمنى على جميع الأهالي إنه بس يشوفوا شيء مش مظبوط غلط يبلشوا يسألوا يبلشوا بالتشين أوف كوماند يعني يروحوا على المدرسة يحكوا مع السيستم برنسبل مع البرنسبل مع السوبر انتندنت إذا ما وصلوا ما يسيروا بعض ما يسيروهم ما يسيروا هذا يروحوا على المجلس التربوي كل جمعة بعد جمعة في في لقاء فلازم الأهل يلعبوا دور كبير والدور اللي بيلعبوه الأهل رح كتير يساعد المدارس إن كان بالإدارة أو بالمجلس التربوي سو هذه كتير نقطة لازم الأهل يكتبوا شكرا في سؤال كثير انسالت مبنى كريستفل هاي سكول بيقولوا بالعربي اكل الدهر عليه وشرب يعني اتس اولموست كولابس از ات ذس ترو اند وات كود بي دان تو هاف يو اني بلانز تو ريبيلد تو اي دونت نو سو يو سكير مي فور ذا سكند ثينج Alhamdulillah, it's not collapsing. Alhamdulillah, it's good. Physically, it's in great shape. Um, yeah, thank you. Before I begin, though, I want to mention Ami Ubayin, Estez Muhammad Jamil Bazi. Yeah. Okay. Estez Muhammad Jamil Bazi, Kat Estez Bil Lebanon, Wa Estez Naamin. When it comes to Crestwood schools, what everybody has to understand is the schools were built in the 1960s. Schools that were built in the 1960s are not built like they are now, nor how they were in the 1940s. They weren't built for what we do. Crestwood High School was built for maybe 900, 1,000 students. Crestwood High School was built to be a school that people walked to school. Not everybody drove to school. And like Estes Hassan Bezzi mentioned, there wasn't a bond since 1967. And then we had a bond in 2015. The bond in 2015, they started work in 2016. It was a $35 million bond. I give credit to Esteth Hassan Bezi, Uzuhir Abdelhaq, Ahmed Maki, and others in this room for getting that bond passed. Because no bond was ever passed before then but they had to make a sacrifice. They knew that we needed $70 million, but they went for 35 million just to get something started. Our school, we have an excellent team. We've invested, I'd like the community to know, currently the Crestwood School District is investing $15 million into the school district, and we are not raising anyone's taxes. And we are able to do this while we have added double to triple the amount of support staff in special education, double and triple the support staff in facilities. We've increased our technology. And why do I say all this? This is because our board, as well as our team, we ensure that every single dollar that is being spent is being spent correctly. Additionally, and moreover, 
When I came into this district, we had a 16% fund balance. Basically what that means is that take how much money you make at home, and then 16% of that you put in your savings. We are now at a 24% fund balance. We increased our savings account by 8% while we are doing all this work. Why do I say this? Now I'm gonna to get to my punchline. We are using the communities correctly. And yes, we have more infrastructure work to do at our high school. We need to build a new gymnasium. We need to build more science classrooms. We need to build a better auditorium. We need to build more classrooms so we can reduce class size. We need to improve parking. Everybody keeps yelling at us about parking. We need to improve parking. We, we know we have to do all this. But just the high school alone, that's a good 20 to $30 million. And with school funding, we are very tied to what we get for specific things. That's another conversation. I'd love to have a panel sit down and talk to the community about how schools are funded. Because I don't think people really understand where your tax dollars go and how they can be used. So, is Crestwood High School falling apart? No, alhamdulillah. Because if it was, I would tell you right now, I would tell you I need a bond tomorrow. But do we need to improve Crestwood High School? Yes. Do we need to improve Riverside Middle School? Yes. Do we need to improve Hillcrest, Highview, Cherry Hill, and Kinlock? Yes. Do we need another school? Yes. That's what my, that was my question. We do need another school. Okay. And I say all this because, alhamdulillah, our community is growing. And our community deserves the best. We can no longer live in a system built in the 1960s. We need to live in a system built in the 2020s. Get us ready for 2100. Okay, thank you. Danielle, uh, how having six board members change the status of Crestwood? What is the real change before and after? Uh, we have seven board members. Yeah, six out of seven. Oh, having them out of, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, before I answer that, I did want to touch on one thing about the schools and the condition of the schools. And I want to remind everybody and take you back about 30 years ago when people were raising their families 30 years ago. I grew up a family of seven. We lived in an 1,100 square foot home, 1,100 square feet. I live in a home right now. We're raising three daughters in a 1,700 square foot home. And my kids think that our house is small. So we're going from a time where we used to put three Three kids in a bedroom together, and that was fine. That's how we live. People used to come from overseas, live in our houses with us. Every inch of the house was used. Now we're living in a time where we want every child to have not only their own bedroom, they want their own master suite, and they want a family room, and they want a game room, and they want a theater. So I'm so saying cool. that, you know, as, as uh, our, you know, wants, not our needs, as our wants change, in the community, okay, we look at the things that were older, like an older building, and we want these improvements. So, you know, for the safety of the students, there are improvements we need and we're working on, but on those wants that we need, we just ask for a little bit of patience because that takes a lot of money, and we're gonna need help doing that. So I did, I did just wanna say that. And uh, what is the benefit of having um, six Arab school board members uh, I, I think there's a lot of benefit in it. We have a community who is, you know, uh, predominantly Arab American, and now we have a board that represents our community, where before we didn't have that. We didn't have a voice before. Uh, I remember days when my kids were very young and starting the Crestwood District about, you know, 15 years ago, and I felt like there was no voice for our community. The only voice that we had were people who had the courage to stand up and fight for us, like Hassan Bazid and Zuhair Abdul Hab, and to get us those things that Hassan talked about. Now I think that we have a board who can work together. Um, they understand each other. And I have to be honest with you, I don't really think that this is all because it's six Arab Americans and, and one not. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I think whether we were all white, all black, all 
era, uh, I think everybody brings a certain uh, skill to the table, not necessarily just their background of their heritage, right? And I think that that's very important to remember. And like Hassan talked before about the board, you know, we all bring something to the table. We all have that, you know, that special expertise where when you put all of these things together, right, they make an excellent board to work with. And, and that's what we need your help with. I do want to say to the parents out there and to our community that just because you see a board that has six Arab Americans on it doesn't mean that we don't have to follow the rules, doesn't mean that we don't have to live by grants, uh, you know, what allowable costs are for grants, doesn't mean that we don't have to follow the law, it doesn't mean in no fi wastahan or wastahan or ibn ammi or bint khalti. Those things are challenging. Um, so it's, it, I would say it is challenging to be an Arab American on a board where your community are your family, right? Or they're the friends that you grew up with and you try to have to please everybody. And at the same time, everybody thinks that you have to please them or that you have to do a favor for them or because they voted for you that whatever they want is the most important thing. So I'd like to call on our community to alleviate some of that burden. And I'm not saying don't call for help. We're always here for you. But to alleviate some of the burden where you think that because you're Arab and we're Arab that we're just gonna ma you know, wave this magic wand and things are gonna happen immediately. And it doesn't happen that way. So I would say that that's one of the most challenging things. Uh, a continuing continuation to your point of view. Before, we used to say that we, as minority, were being uh, discriminated. Do you think, Hassan, that we might someday be accused, when being majority, of discriminating others? So, <clears throat> I think uh, you opened it up by saying, look around you, Look at all the elected officials in the room, yeah. right? Uh, back, way back when, uh, when Judge Salami was one of the first to pave the way, right? Let's look at now how the demographics have shifted, but not only the demographics of, we're not talking about race, we're talking about education, we're talking about uh, learning and involvement, right? So when I grew up at home, you know, great upbringing. We brought up, we were brought up in, the, in a house we never, we we didn't get everything we wanted, but we had everything we needed, right? My father and mother always made sure that whatever, I mean, I was the baby, so I kind of got everything I wanted. But if you think about it, um, the, the education factor, they, you know, my father did attend a little bit of college, but he didn't finish. And he was a foreman in the factory. So now, I went to school, I attended, I graduated from a university. Doesn't make me better than someone who didn't though. But, but the demographics has changed. I think every parent in the room at one point has a hope that their children will end up going to a second level education, right? So now if you look at me personally, I mean that's the bar in my house for my kids. You know, we talk all the time, what school are you gonna go to? Are, are you gonna are you gonna play an instrument in college? Are you gonna play a sport in college? What kind of college are you gonna go to? And that's the expectation now. To where I think 30, 40 years ago it wasn't the expectation, right? I think it was, um, how do you say, it was maybe a delicacy if a child, maybe a seven, one of seven at one point would go to school out of a 1,100 square foot house, right? I mean, we're beating the odds right now. I think Crestwood and Dr. Masalam could alleviate, or maybe Mr. Abdulhadi could, could expand. But right now, I can't remember how many Ivy League acceptance we've had out of Crestwood. I can't remember, uh, well, I, I do remember one out of um, 
18, they gave out 18, U of M Ann Arbor gave out 18 academic scholarships. Crestwood had one of them this last year. So if we continue to look, Crestwood is on the map. They're, people know who they are. And that's because I believe it's this generational shift. My father expected me to go to college. I went to college, right? I expect my children to go to college. So now, you know, 15, 20 years from now, maybe I'm that Hassan Bazid when that new kid comes in. And I'm that, kid, I'm that guy telling him, you know, maybe this is how you go about things, to mentor kids. And I can tell you every single person sitting up here mentor, mentors multiple kids. And I don't know how to say mentor in Arabic, Hassan. I know you've told me before. Murabbi. Yeah. Murabbi. And, and that's something that we're shifting. Uh, so to me, to, to, to expand and look at Crestwood academically, in my opinion, it's one of the, it's, it's a top public school in Wayne County. That's my opinion because of what I see. It's one of the safest, I can assure you that too. Lack of teachers, it's a common issue. Anyway you look at public schools, charter schools, how do you face this issue? Do you have any lack of teachers? And what about the salary? You know, the salary levels in public schools compared to other uh, categories is... So, I'll, let, I'll let Dr. Musan touch upon the salaries, but before I give it to him, I just wanted to kind of say with what uh, Ms. Alzea said, and even with Hassan said, with the discrimination. Hmm. Uh, will we ever face something like that? Yes, we will. Is, does it mean it's true? No, we'll always be, someone will use all discrimination, corruption, uh, lack of educational uh, purpose within the schools. Uh, but I can honestly and strongly say that there isn't anybody on this stage that got into the education field because <laughs> of anything, or it didn't have, the, there was no color to it. We got into it because of the passion to help kids. It didn't come with what the kid looked like. We got into it to help all kids. So you're always going to get accused of that, but again, that's just something normal we deal with. As far as the shortages we uh, deal with, yes, we do have them. And like you said, it's everywhere, not just at Crestwood. But with our team at Crestwood, I just know that everybody rises to the challenge. We have our support staff that we're lucky to have. We have our coaches. We have our uh, teachers. Any teacher that can help is always willing to help. So do we have sometimes long-term subs because we have a shortage and we're going through the process? Yes, we do. But everybody steps up. Our coaches are developing the lesson plans for those long-term subs. Uh, they are in their coaching model and helping those teachers when they have the, that break to kind of get them to the next step. All the department chairs, our leadership team, those are all uh, components within our school that are set up to help each other to deal with this kind of stuff. And I think with, we partnered up with the district, with the uh, local universities, to start that kind of a pipeline where even they have student teachers, because they are going in that field, they are going that route, to kind of get them into our building, to get them the coaching, so we, for the future, we have those people available, and they find their niche within our Crestwood family to be able to kind of help alleviate some of those shortages that we encounter and the challenges. And you can take over with the money part. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt. I just wanted to add something to that. You know, we had a great educator in this community who contributed so much to the success of children in our community. And I don't just mean the Crestwood community, I also mean the uh, Dearborn community. Uh, you know, Ayman Fadlallah, Allah Yerhamu, he gave a speech one time and it really hit home with me. And in his speech he said that people tell me when I'm doing this job that I have to be colorblind. And he said, well, I'm sorry, I can't be colorblind. Because if I don't see a student's color, so if I don't see their story or where they came from, I can't help them. I can't let, have them, you know, I can't bring them to succeeding their full potential, right? Because I have to see who they are. So we are a community of color, but that doesn't mean that we're, you know, we're going to discriminate one way or another. It's just having students rise to the level, rise to the potential, but also understanding who they are and where they came from to get them there. So I just did want to add that, sorry. 
You took a little bit of my thunder, but that's okay. You're the board president. You're allowed to. On the discrimination piece, I just want to touch on that real quick. I'm a Muslim before I'm an educator. In the Islam, we do not ever look at people differently because of who they are, where they come from. And that's why I hold the line. And I can assure you that we have meetings with people from different faiths, different backgrounds, different ethnicities. And as Hassan mentioned, we mentor all these children. So it does not matter where anyone comes from, everyone's going to get the best. In terms of salaries, I'll just tell you a real quick story on how important I think salaries are. Uh, Dr. Lazar, who is our associate superintendent, she's here and she leads our negotiating teams with the union. Um, her and, and Andrew Hara, who's not here, they, they, they go into negotiations. In 2020, we went into the first set of negotiations as a new administration. So we sat and they said, okay, Yusuf, you know, what's our plan? What's our focus? I said, you go in there and off the bat, you tell the union that we're going to raise the bottom step by $8,000. The union looked at us, well, not me, because I wasn't in negotiations, because Dr. Lazar is my lead negotiator. The union looked at her, you're crazy. We've never had a negotiating team come in and off the bat say, we're going to give you this. And I'll tell you why. We will pay our teachers the best salary our district can afford. Because our teachers are more important than any other profession in the world. But I say clearly what our district can't afford. Because again, I can go back to funding, and when you break it down, 60 to 70% of our funding is spent on human resources. Because we believe putting the best people in front of the kids is more important than buying something for them. So, and I, we're going into negotiations again next year. And we're going to look at where are we, what can we afford, and how can we attain and retain the best teachers. Because if they're not the best, they won't be at the Crestwood School District. Uh, just a last question for Dr. Yusuf about the classification of uh, Crestwood Elementary Schools. Is it bad? No, it is not bad. So, are we... Retarded? As the question says, I mean... There's a lot of, of students and too many students in one room. Oh, you're talking about size, classroom size. Not classroom, no, and classification general. Yeah, so I'll talk about the... So when I mentioned earlier, we have about 15, 16 million dollars of improvements. 10 million of that, 10 to 12 million of that right now is going into our elementary schools. We are building 12 classrooms between Kenlock, Highview, and Hillcrest. These new classrooms are going to reduce class sizes. Additionally, what that, and it's gonna focus, our focus on reduction of class size is gonna be early elementary, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, the three most crucial years to a child's education. Moreover, with the additional space, we're gonna be able to support more special education students and help them with their success. Again, we are doing this because we have been fiscally responsible. And the money that we receive from ESSER funding, we are using for long-term success. All three of our elementary schools right now, all three of our elementary schools, two of them received a reward status, and one of them received, not reward, but right below reward. I, I, it, it slips my, my mind what it is. In the last rating, we are looking at the data right now. We, at the mid-year mark, are seeing, and it was in our last board meeting, we at the mid-year mark are seeing many students improving at a faster rate this year than they did last year. About what was, about 15% average improvement across the board. And that's at mid-year. Last year, 90% of our students improved by one or more grade levels in the school year. So we are moving in the right direction. But our opportunities yeah. are that we have many students with higher needs than we have had in the past. 
and that is an onset or, or a offshoot of the COVID pandemic. في سؤال شهدنا مع إشكالية الكتب في مدينة ديربون مؤخرا إشكالية تربوية عميقة هي تخبط شخصية التلميذ ما بين عقائدية ما بين عقائد تربوية مختلفة ما هي الاستراتيجية المتبعة أو التي ينبغي أن تتبع في كريستون لنشر ثقافة تربوية مدنية موحدة يعني سؤال منيح لو مثل ما قلت المدارس المدارس بتلعب دور كبير بتثقيف التلميذ يعني تثقيفه من حيث العلم البيت بيلعب دور اكبر من حيث تثقيف التلميذ كيف كمان بده يكون جاهز للمجتمع كيف بده يكون جاهز لحتى يتعامل مع المجتمع المدارس يعني بوجود المعلمين اللي الكفؤين اللي عم بيختاروهم بالدستريك يعني كمان بتلعب دور انه يقدروا يثقفوا للتلميذ اكثر الجمعيات اللي حوالينا لازم تلعب كمان دور يعني صرنا صار هذا وطن هون اللي قلنا صرنا مجتمع متكامل سو so الكل بيلعب دور لحد لتثقيف التلميذ مثل ما قلت الاهل بيلعبوا دور دور كبير كثير وراح اقول لك شغله يا دكتور انه وقت اللي بده يجي تلميذ على المدرسه بالهاي سكول عم بيسوق فراري هيدي بتلعب دور كيف تنميه فكر التلميذ لحتى يكون جاهز بعد ما يتخرج من الهاي سكول للمجتمع كنا نروح ماشي على المدرسه كنا نروح ماشي هيدي 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 هالشغلات اللي بنشوفها وال بفوتوا بعض التلاميذ بيبقى لابسين الثياب معنا شيء يعني مش عم نحاول ننتقد حدا بس الاهل لازم يساعدوا التلميذ او الطالب او ابنهم انه يكون جاهز لحتى يواجه التحديات يعني ما فينا نجي نخلي الولد يكون سبويل لدرجه لدرجه انه لا الاستاذ في يسيطر عليه ولا الاهل فيهم يسيطروا عليه وتربيه الولد ما بتبلش بعمر ال 16 15 و16 و18 تربيه الولد بتبلش من هو صغير الجو بالبيت بيلعب دور كثير مهم انه كيف تقدر تحضر الولد للمستقبل وقت اللي بتبعثه على المدرسه يعني بالتعاون مجددا يعني بحب ركز على هذه النقطه انه لازم الاهل يضل في معهم تواصل يصير في تواصل وقت اللي يصير في الكونفرنسز يعني رجاء ما نقول انه انشغلنا هلا وما بنقدر نروح لا لازم تروح لازم كمان انت بس تحكي مع الاستاذ بتعرف كيف الاستاذ كيف عم بفكر يعني كيف لوين عم بياخذ الولد سو هيدي بتلعب ادوار كثيره يعني وان شاء الله انه بنكون بدي احب بس يمكن هيدي اخر مهله فاتني كمان بدي بدي ارجع شوي صغيره لورا انه وقت اللي صار في تغيير بالبورد اوف اديوكيشن كمان في عنا سيدي كمان الباك جراوند ذكرها يمكن خي حسن انه سلوى فواز يعني كمان لعبت دور كبير بتحول البورد اوف اديوكيشن وفي عنا كمان مو سابا محمد الصبار يعني اجى من باك جراوند بروفيشنال يعني الاشخاص نطلع على الاشخاص اللي ليدنج هالديستريكت هيدي يعني عم بركز عليها قصه البورد وقصه الادمنستريشن عنا ناس كفؤين لازم نكون معهم لانه المسيره ماشيه وان شاء الله المسيره رح تكون للافضل وما في مسايره يعني ما في مسايره لاي حدا منهم الشخص اللي بده يعمل بده يشتغل بده يشتغل من قلبه بده يعمل والحمد لله يعني بعتقد انه احنا على الطريق الصحيح I have one final question whoever would love to, to reply how will we differentiate students like struggling gifted ESL there are boards board students in the classrooms Sorry, can you repeat that yeah. question? How will we differentiate students like struggling, gifted, ESL, etc., knowing that there are bored students in the classrooms? Bored, bored students? Bored. 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 I thought I was, I was confused for a second. Um, you know, so you have maybe you know, 20 to 25 students in one classroom. The challenges, or the opportunities, um, and you know, challenges doesn't have to be negative either. We can rise to our challenges. But uh, the challenge is that everybody's on a different level, right? 
So students are learning, you know, at an accelerated level, they're learning at a level where they're supposed to be, or they're learning, learning at a level where they need to come, you know, come more advanced. And um, I think the way that we do that is we have staff that knows and is educated on how to work with students of all different levels. And we bring in supplemental employees, like Dr. Mosalam was saying, we spend a good portion of our budget on human resources. And that, you know, comes with training individuals to deal with every type of student. But um, I had the microphone in my hand when the question was asked, but uh, I would like to give it to Ronnie because Ronnie actually is a principal in the building who has to deal with multiple students and multiple educators and multiple levels. Good job. So, you know, with every, for example, just at the high school level, uh, with every one of our meetings, it starts off with four questions. And those are the PLC questions. What do students know? Um, now they're, I'm losing my train of thought. What do students know? How will, uh, what do we do when we get them there? What will we do when they don't get there? And how, and how do we improve on all that, uh, those things? So, and I think I messed them up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but that's how our meetings start. So through, and just as an administrative team, like we are constantly, there's actually a form where my administrators, myself, are constantly walking through the building, entering classrooms, and what we have is what we call look for us. What are we looking for? Are we looking for the differentiation of instruction? Are we looking at for different ways strategies are being implemented within the classroom to help struggling students? Uh, we've also, at the high school level, we've had the resources, we had the support staff, we have our math coach, like I said earlier, our literacy coach, that are working with teachers to model strategies and implement certain things within the classroom to help them uh, meet the needs of all those students. We put in places intervention classes. For example, if you're struggling uh, math, we've taken classrooms where we put those struggling students, uh, like eight or ten students per in, in a class, to allow that teacher to have the time and opportunity to work individually with those students so they can meet, meet their needs and get them to the next level. And this is ongoing. And then we also have our school improvement. And that's what, where the data piece comes in. We look at our data, we see how our students are doing. Where are the areas of improvement? Where are the areas where we're excelling in? And we reevaluate, we put our, our goals in place and reevaluate what we need to do as a school and who are the people to help support with those, uh, to meet those goals and how we got everybody working together on the same team to be able to address the needs of our students. So that's just the tip of the iceberg of all the things we're doing, uh, but there's more. And just to kind of touch off what Hassan said, in terms of those scholarships, I'm going to correct you, it was 33 students that received scholarships to the University of Ann Arbor last year. Fantastic. <laughs> We have to thank uh, Dr. Yusuf, Daniel, Hassan, Roni. I want to thank يعني أنا عمليا بعرف دكتور يوسف حسن شوي شكرا كثير بدي شكر لخينا أحمد مكي اللي is our sponsor for this evening and he is our sponsor for the year to come thank you very much I, I just wanted before we finish I just this is an excellent panel there's so much here, so much information, but I do want to tell you, you can get information, you can get your answers, uh, your questions answered, you can find out exactly what's going on in the schools, you can find out where money is going, what programs are up to date, who is being hired in the district, you can find that all out two times every month, because we have our school board meetings twice a month, and I encourage everybody to come, bring your neighbors, bring your family, bring your friends, Come to the school board meetings and find out exactly what's going on and get real-time information. We have amazing board members 
We have a, a wonderful team. Um, it's just Hassan and I up here from the school board, but trust me, we have many more school board members that have so much more to offer and have so much um, knowledge that they can offer to the community, especially people like Billy Amen, Mo Seba, Salwa Fawaz, David Williamson, Nadia Berry. I mean, it's not just us two. These are the two that you're seeing, but it's a team. Anything, anything to say, Dr. Yusuf? Just to final, finalize? Final words, this, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. My doors are open. As President Alzea said, we are extremely transparent. You want to know where every dollar is spent? We will show you. You want to know how we're improving? We will help you. You want to tour the school? I will buy you the cup of coffee and walk through with you. I'll come tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. أول أربعة بالشهر الجاي على الأغلب راح نكون مع رئيس بلدية ديرمون هايتس بالبزي. Thank you.